Hey, this is William Tincup and Ryan Leary, and you're listening, hopefully watching, the Practitioner Corner Podcast. Today we have Greg on. Uh, Ryan, how you doing? How's your day? I am fantastic. I'm super excited for today's call. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Greg, would you do us a favor, the audience a favor, and introduce yourself? Uh, absolutely. My name is Greg Muccio. I am uh, the head of talent acquisition at Southwest Airlines. I just celebrated my 23rd anniversary with them on what? Tuesday. So I know, right? Is that crazy, even crazy. normal? No, I told my boss, I was like, I took the under on myself, and so I lost <laughs> lost some money there, but it's, you know, it was it was still a smart bet at that time. You need to yeah, get you no, a Rolex. Fair. Fair. Yeah, Please. Right. Please. Wow, you know who uh, who was at Southwest? It, you probably didn't crisscross. Libby Sartain. Yeah. She was um, CHRO 100 years ago. Literally, I started probably within three months or so after she left. Like her, her role was still open oh, at the wow. time that I started. So yeah. She's absolutely lovely. Lives down in uh, Central Texas. Yeah. And uh, she's on the board of Manpower. So I just yeah. recently got to kind of reconnect with her. And because she was in a board meeting that I was presenting in and uh, she's just like, she's Texan. So she's like, uh, like yeah. One of my ancestors fought for the Republic of Texas. So yeah. I've got that stuff going on, and so does she. She actually, her ancestor that fought for the Republic, they gave him like 600 acres. Their, her and her husband went and bought the 600 acres. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Down in like Pflugerville. Like that nice. wasn't cheap. Okay. Right. right, for and sure. So, yeah. and, uh, and so, yeah, wonderful person and wonderful HR strategist just that's that's cool so 23 years yeah, i think it's genuine i think it's very with her from everything that i've known read or been able to see you know very genuine and i don't think um it's changed no you know through her journey or whatever which is no. those, that's nice to see with anybody right where there's there's mm -hmm. this core thing that you can sort of count on i guess yeah yeah it's yeah. predictable she's she's that person whether or not she's at yahoo or at southwest or wherever she is right same person same yep. person. So what's your current, uh, what do you do at Southwest again? What's the title? Yeah, so um, I'm the managing director of talent acquisition or I'm the lead head of talent acquisition. So, yeah. Okay. And I've been in TA the whole entire time. I started out as a recruiter um, and just kind of worked my way up. And at this point in time, I've been really blessed with some really good leaders and um, the last two um, have really gave, gave me a lot of freedom to, to sort of kind of create an organization. And, and so I, I have approximately maybe 250 people in my TA org and, and I really have built it so that it's the, the way I, I like to describe it is um, we're a full service staffing company with one client. Right. And that oh, that's client cool. at the end of the year determines whether or not to renew our contract. And that's really how I want us, uh, how I like us to approach the work so that it's, it's not about handling a wreck. It's about a, a service that you provide, right? If that makes sense. And then we also do something, um, what I call full service, um, full service staffing or full, um, uh, total talent staffing, if you will, which is we do a lot of, uh, silver and bronze medals, if you will, right? And so just more of an approach where we're trying to, um, you know, I, I may talk to you, William, and, and go, man, he's a great, great Southwest fit. And maybe we had, um, you, you put him for a role and we chose Ryan, um, but we're like, wow, you know, and so now part of what we do and even some part of our tech stuff tech stack helps support us to go, Hey, William, here's three other roles that you're actually a match with and, 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 and be able to do that. So just excited to be able to build, I, that I've gotten to, to build a program. And you know, we, like I said, we do, we have a career mobility team. We have a campus team. We're literally, um, in, in elementary schools talking about aviation. Uh, I have a yeah. huge recruitment Smart. marketing candidate experience team. So just really excited about all that. A couple of things there, Greg. Um, well, one, I, I, I want to understand how, because it's very rare that we talk, I think we maybe talked out of the hundred and some episodes we've done already. 
one person that's been with the company for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. You didn't come in as a recruiter there and say, I'm going to be here for 20 years. Right. What, what, what yeah. kept you there? Let, let's start there, and then yeah. we'll, we'll get into some of the fun stuff. First job yeah. was a recruiter. You're just yeah. straight Sen- up. Senior recruiter. Senior yeah. recruiter. And, what, and, was the, uh, what was the roles that you were recruiting for? Um, my own department, so HR. And okay. then um, that was where I started, and then uh, got to support f- the finance department, internal audit, and then what we called at the time, they were called network planning. They right. Were, they're much bigger now or whatever. But so a lot of those businesses, uh, really, really good. And then just, I'll get to you, I'll answer your question, Ryan. But one of the things that I, I don't know why I like to share this with people, but I do think it's before I got my first leadership role at Southwest, I interviewed seven times and didn't get whatever within the same organization. And so sometimes when I have that person that gets upset about the, I'm like, you got six more. Six more yeah, six more times. before you could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me let me know when you at least get to four, and I can we can start commiserating. But yeah, you didn't get your first one in a year yeah. and a half of being here. It's like yeah, let's 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 talk a little bit. But yeah, you know, right? I was I was laughing this week when we were people were we were talking about you know being here twenty three years, and I said yeah, I'm like the next closest competitor. <laughs> 19 and a half years or whatever is the next thing and to your point it's not there and um you know i I think where i work it's it's um certainly about the people i think the culture at southwest um you know what i always tell people is um you know the things that you read about it um can't do it justice until you're here they just really can i mean it's like that's really good i got 10 other stories that are better than that right and and what those pieces are and and so, you know, I've had opportunity and, and, you know, I've answered that question before Ryan where I said, hey, it, it's just literally when you go to bed, you know, on a Sunday night and you're not dreading going to work on Monday or, or going to bed any night and not mm-hmm. dreading work, not that it's easy or, or any of that kind of stuff, but you're not dreading it. And, and you begin just thinking of the people that you do the work with or whatever. And so that's just always been my piece is like, okay, um, and I love it and I get to do these things. So that's what someone has to come offer me, right? Like it can't just be a better title or more money. It's gotta be, am I gonna, am I gonna feel that same way about another yeah. job, right? And, that's, and, and so th- that's, that's one of the really big reasons. It seems like her created it that way that it's a people first business yes it's transportation and yes it's it's a uh, it's aviation etc but people are at the heart or at the center of mm-hmm. what southwest it's, it seems as an outsider at least it yeah. seems like it's always been that way yeah no for sure and i think what's fun as well is you know through our history so many of the really innovative and creative and and money making things that we've come up with come from an individual person they are not necessarily some you know executive top down or whatever that said this is what we're going to do so many of um our historic ideas were generated from frontline or or that kind of thing or in a much more collaborative way and i think um i think that's a really you know, huge piece. And, and of course, obviously in my role and whether I'm talking to candidates or talking to folks like you or my own team and just kind of go, Hey, th- those are just things you've got to, you got to measure up when you're looking at it. And I don't, sometimes people don't do that. I, I think there's fascinating. I don't, I don't, we have a really large, probably of our well over 4,000, probably even higher than that of, of, employees that we call boomerangs right that left and came back and i think that always says um a lot uh um just because that they, they've had this they go someplace else and they're just like okay wait a minute i missed that and i'm, I'm willing to, to kind of go back so yeah yeah i think if you asked ryan if he would go back to connexa the old connexa pre ibm if he would go back and work with rudy and uh and all that stuff He'd go back. He'd leave. He'd leave. <laughs> I'd say bye, he, William. <laughs> he'd go an, back. There's an opening. Right. There's a host yeah. opening. Seriously. Greg, I don't know if you can see behind me. I've got this red photo here. And I've got yeah. a green one there. Now, eventually, they'll get up on the wall. Yeah. Those are from 2008. 
2007. They're Connexa posters. They're Connexa. Wow. They were the, the they were the 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 the, EV, the core values of yeah. of Connexa. Yeah. They were the Tenexas, and I was like, I really like them, and they sent them to me, and that was yeah. it. it. Was and I've had them ever since. They've been on the wall. They've just been down for a while. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, you go back. It's again, yeah. you you might get tempted with the grass is greener. You get into the, the, to the boomerangs, yeah. you get tempted, yeah. more money, a title, you know, whatever, more travel, whatever. Yeah. The bit is, and all of a sudden you go do that, and you're like, yeah, the money's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. I always yeah. say, it. it's like, yeah, the grass is greener, still has to get mowed. <laughs> it's going to yeah. get mowed by yeah. you. So, yeah. so you know, there's that piece. And, I, you know, Ryan, I think that, you know, you, you, you know, talking about those values, I think that that's really important. Because I think one of the things that we always you know, what we will tell people a lot of times in the interview is um, to be your authentic self, right? That's who we want to see coming into work every day. Now, sure, you know, we have some values as well and, and they're not negotiable, but we're looking for that and who we're hiring and also just hoping yeah. that people identify with that. And then you can also show up in that way, right? And, and, right. and so, you know, people is, um, you know, I'll have somebody that's like, you know, I flew on y'all, you know, the other day and it was really great, but the flight attendant wasn't as funny as they normally are. I'm like, well, you know, that's, they don't have to be funny, right? Like yeah. they have to be, they have to keep you safe. Number one, yeah. that's their, that's their main job. Yeah. Yeah. Second this is, is in the hospitality. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a Disney flight. <laughs> jokes, are, jokes are optional. And, jokes and, are optional. I guess, and the ones that do that, they're not told to do that. That's their, you know, that's, that's their that's own thing are. and how they do it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm sure some get more comfortable or confident over time, but, but it's, but it's, it's piece of that. That's right. Like, yeah, you get to do that, but you could yeah. maybe never tell a joke over the microphone, you know, if you will, and still be, you know, one of the greatest flight attendants that we'd ever mm -hmm. have because of how you're individually taking care of of yeah. our customers and obviously keeping them safe. And, and, and that's that way for, for, for all of our roles, I think, right. Is like, Hey, okay. Um, that Southwest fit, if you will, or whatever that is, it's, it's about those values, but, but people mm -hmm. can, um, show them in different ways. I, I wish you all had more flights out of Philly. Like, I mean, there's nothing I can't yeah. do anything. Yeah. It used to be a ton. Of, like that used to be the airline. Now I'm on American, but cause we don't have the options. Yeah. But I just I, I I've always loved the branding, the commercials, the colors, everything. It's yeah. always been very iconic for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's yeah. again. I think it comes from the heart. I think it's not mm -hmm. contrived. Like I, I, Old Navy did this bit years ago, where they did all their. Oh no, it was the cow. They did all their advertising internal. Yeah. And so they didn't do it with an agency, and so they used real associates, and it was just like it was them. Yeah, and on yep. our commercials, anytime you see somebody in a uniform, that's a Southwest employee. We, there's never an, an actor, actor involved awesome. in that particular piece, which is really yeah. kind of cool and, and fun. And then it's fun when you, you see them out or, or whatever it may be as well yeah. and, uh, yeah. and and do that piece. But, it's, but it's, yeah, it's really cool. I'd be asking for autographs just for yeah, fun. For sure. Just to see right, how they yeah. handle it. Yeah. They're a little celebrity. Yeah. Saw so you on the yeah. safety video on flight. Right, I yeah. just. Can I, get right. your, can I get your autograph yeah, can you get it here? All right, so it's, let's go. It's got to be good, right? It's oh, going to be a good flight. Right? Uh, 100%. This person knows what they're doing. 100%. Knows what they're doing. Yeah. They're I, on, I a, was they're on a safety a video. Yeah. I, mean, I was know. reading a script. Relax, okay? Like, <laughs> yeah. If plane goes down, I'm out first. So uh, I'm just letting you know now. No, so, no, no. No, no. Yeah, so <laughs> let's go back to high school, college. What did you want to yeah. be? What was the uh, ish dream? Yeah, you know, probably like so many others, right? You you kind of build that, uh, you know, who's in your life and around you. And so, mm -hmm. my my dad and my brothers were all in sales, and so that's what I knew the most of, right? What was that particular piece? I had a had a had a brief um, fantasy around. Um, well, okay, let's be honest. <laughs> I wanted to be Magnum PI because that yes. was just so it's like okay there you can't go. watch that yes. show and, the truth so, comes out there Tom right? Selleck and, come on now yeah, like, come on now and so the there Ferrari? was this group, like I'm gonna go into the Navy and be in a Navy intelligence and then you know I had a family member in the service was like let me explain something to you yeah. I was like okay that's a good call out then then you know a brief moment of you know. I think I'd be a really good lawyer and then learn like how much reading was involved. Ooh. I was like, probably 
not a good call as well. And so, um, that's what, you know, that's what, literally that's what turned me off to it too, yeah. is I talked to a, a pre-law student, uh, and they were like, oh yeah, you, when you, when you get to law school, you're literally going to be reading about a thousand pages a night. I'm like, take it. <laughs> like, yeah. I heard that same what? thing and I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's more than I've done up to yeah. this point in time in my first oh, eight yeah. years. Yeah. And so I I'm think, a, no, I think, I'm, yeah. I'm going to need that summarized. <laughs> I, I feel like I we're coming I, from the same cloth here. Right? Yeah. I literally <laughs> asked the counselor in college, I was like, hey, I'm like, which major has the least amount of science in it? And they're like, if you oh, go yeah. business, you only have to take six hours and you can take astronomy. And I'm like, Let's go with that one, right? And um, but but yeah, I, I was you know I did go. It was you know marketing, and you know you did those kind of tests that you would do in high school, and that's kind of where <laughs> mm-hmm. you know it, it shot out. And you know I'll be honest, I you know my first uh, I think either three or four roles out of college was in sales, and I was actually at a staffing agency in sales. And finally just had that moment where I was like, man, um, uh, not only do I really hate this, I'm really bad at it too. And, um, and I'm like, that's just a real, that's not a good combination for career longevity. And I mean, and the thing was, is that was at my at least third different type of sales or fourth even. And so I was like, yeah, it's not the product. It's not that. Uh, And then how many years, uh, Maybe from graduating college, I was probably maybe 29, yeah. 30 uh-huh. at that, I would say. Yeah. Um, Ryan, Ryan quit a staffing firm, his staffing job, yeah, after his honeymoon. He gets married, goes on his honeymoon, <sighs> comes funny. back, goes, enough of this. <laughs> right. Well, no, there was a, it wasn't that simple, Greg. I came That's in like, and my manager said something to me and I lost interest. And I said, I'm out of here. And I yes. There was an interaction before I said I wasn't interested. Eh, I came back well, to the office. So, you know those so interactions. The, you know those yeah. interactions. Right. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, um, so one of the things that they did is they were like, hey, the one thing that we see from you, what you do sell and seem to be able to explain really well is perm placement. Um, and we don't actually have anybody in the office that knows how to recruit for that or do that would you would you be interested in you know if we created that as a role and you know you had to fund your own stuff but you could do this and i was like sure and so you did both t- sides of the desk yeah I did both sides of the desk for a long time finished wow. up my time at the um agency just to kind of grow was um uh you know an on-site person at one of our larger clients uh, here in the area and you know that was some really great you know experience just being able to do that but um it uh what drove me ultimately to to then southwest i i was okay but it was it was right during the dot-com bus and you know william i know you're from this area but there's a whole corridor of uh-huh. it's companies all, yeah. and Bloodbath. and you know we had probably 80% of our temps were in that and overnight, you know, or within gone. gone. And, and yes. so I'm watching people kind of get laid off for, for, you know, not their own doing. And I just was like, and you know, it, you know, you've been in that environment, even if you're safe, being left behind is not sometimes the greatest thing either. And, and, right. um, had a good friend, uh, from church in a Bible study that, uh, we were just talking and she was like, Hey, uh, I know one of the recruiters there and I think they have an opening and pass the resume along and 23 years ago. And you know, here I am. So, yeah. So for the audience real, real quick, um, Greg and I both grew up in Arlington, Texas. He went to uh, a rival high school, dare I say a better high school at the time, uh, in the eighties. And one of my fights in high school, many, many fights, but one of my fights in high school was in the Lamar parking lot, school parking lot, on a Friday night. I, for whatever reason, me and my friends were hanging out with a bunch of girls from the Lamar, and the football team came back from a loss. And I had Colt stickers, Arlington, I had my, uh, my high school stickers on my car. And all of a sudden it's like, here's all these people that are very angry. Right. Very angry. 
and we're talking to the girls from the school. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Bad, bad time, bad, right there. Bad time, really bad, bad time. Timing. That, so, yeah. You know what I've thought since then? If, if they would have won, like they were supposed to, if they would have won, probably wouldn't have to would have happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's you know, before we started recording, and we were trying to, and we were educating Ryan on just you know Friday Night Lights, and and you know if you're not, you know, to... the movie is real. Like just, oh, just you know, we yeah. we actually. Um, it was two years, maybe three after I graduated, that team that's portrayed, mm-hmm. you know, yes. Lamar played them in the playoffs or whatever. Because, oh, really? And that, they played Odessa Carter? Permian, and that was a, one of their things is their school, that school is Mojo. K through 12. So oh, yeah. the kids, right? We when I went to that playoff game, I kid you not, and this, you know, think against the Texas school, Stadium. Yeah, they, they had no penalties and from a this from an eye view made no mistakes no blocking no. mistakes no t- no assignment mistakes or whatever it was a pro team. it was and, at least and, a, a and, good college and, team and i think maybe that team might have had one or two kids that went to d1 ball but it was because they just played so much like a unit and, and you you truly had to beat them to beat them so yeah so when i was, was, with, yeah. when I was with walmart in the 90s late 80s and 90s, I lived out in Odessa and Midland. So I lived in Midland, opened a store there, and then went to Odessa and opened a store there. And that stuff is real. Like, yeah. we, we'd all go. Like, like the Walmart, you could just, like, sales on a Friday night. Yeah, there's nothing there. Nobody, you could almost shut down the store at about 6 because everyone was going to the game. Or everyone so, yeah. was going so, to go somewhere to so that, was a bus, that was a bus full of kids, right, that – you know, they were angry and upset on their own, but what yes. they were, what they were thinking about is the next day of practice and how, cause you, you always came in on Saturday and right. when you won, you had donuts and watched film and maybe oh, did yeah. a small little jog. You Man. lost, you were in the bleachers until you, you couldn't <laughs> walk anymore. But then also it was facing your parents who had, 100%. in this case, traveled or whatever. Oh, and, shame. And so, yeah, you were wrong place, wrong time for mm-hmm. some folks to get some frustration out. So, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Didn't do well for me. So where did you go to school? So Where'd I went you... to UT Arlington. Yeah, um, UT. So, yeah, yeah. Stayed, stayed local and, uh, uh, you know, Funny story on on the connection, and I, you know, for where I am now as a leader of this, uh, and I didn't spot it at the time, so so luckily you can see that I've learned and grown. But but when I was in college, I was also in a fraternity and participated in a lot in Rush, and I and I I when I was there, I, I really re branded our rush i was you know when i was selected to do it i thought ours was really boring and we just did a lot of things to the point where even afterwards even after i graduated i would get asked to come back and teach rush to everybody else and how to do this and i always tell everybody about when you're looking for work don't get hung up on the titles because they don't make sense and i said when i graduated college had companies listed jobs at, instead of recruiter as rush chairman i would have known exactly what i would have done and i would have been in this a, a recruiter since i was 23 years yeah. old right yeah, because yeah. Right. i right. knew that that's what it was and where it was and it, and it wasn't really till towards the end of my time at the staffing company when i was talking to somebody else about it and they were like of course you were good at it it's the same thing as recruiting and you're good at that and it was just like the light bulb just started like, oh, yeah, what, I saw what, that too. I just was testing you if you. Yeah. Um, and so that's just, you know, so, uh, and, I, and I like to tell that. I like to tell, you know, the people that are listening because most likely there are a lot of things like that that are who you are and are being developed at a, at a much skills. younger age than what, than what we maybe give credit for. It just looks different. It's called something different or whatever, but... Uh, there is so much of that, and and you know, one of the reasons why I'm real passionate about one of the things that we do at Southwest, where we are now in, you know, I have a campus team, and we do a really great internship program. But we also now have a high school internship program. We do oh, wow. a summer camp for high school age employees' kids to teach them about the ways of work at Southwest. So they've grown up. 
being excited about Southwest, whatever their mom, dad, or, or right. but, but that may not be what they want to be, right? And so show them all these different opportunities. But we go into junior highs as well, and when we do aviation days for third through eighth grade, and then we're in elementary schools. And a big piece of that, and one of my huge beliefs is we don't have as a big of as a skills gap in this country as we do an awareness gap. That's where the real problem is at that age is you, you look at it, you know, if you go talk or three or four years ago, if you would go talk um, to an elementary school kid, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. Fireman, policeman, right. Right. teacher, maybe right. doctor, you know, those types of things, because that's either what they know and maybe, you know, uh, what their parent does or whatever. And, and so I think it was just really, really important to be able to do that and, and then you know we certainly know as you as you begin to do things with either you know in diversity or female the younger they get planted a seed for something that is stem the, the better right there so the earlier you can get into that and so that's one of the reasons we're really i'm really passionate about it and we are is just to create that awareness and then help them begin to show them the way that they can get there right and what that is and and part of it for me is just is truly that my own personal journey that it's like, man, if somebody would have been able to sit down and go, man, you know, you're, you really like doing this and you excel at it. And here's the job or jobs that that connects to. Greg, you're dangerously close to converting me to believing <laughs> that you care. Let it's, me just tell you. No, no. So, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me back up. Let me tell you the story behind Hold on. Okay. He's from okay. Philadelphia. Just yeah. remember, Greg. Okay, He's from yeah. Philadelphia. Make, okay. Don't right. make like I'm on the hit. goal line and I just yeah, need yeah, yeah. one more play. Yeah. There don't make me hit the play button here, people. I will do it. <laughs> um, so I, I have, I generally have a problem believing when organizations do good things. Yeah. When they go into the community and do things. I always feel, okay, there's a business reason they're doing it. Now, from my own experience, it's been that way. With the exception of I, I, I was with Enterprise rent car They completely right. are involved yeah, in the much. community. Love it. Connects us. Same way. Everything else, not so much o over my career. I get the feeling, I feel genuinely that you are in the Connexa and the Enterprise kind of realm of they, companies they that want to do back it something. Up. Yeah, yeah, they really, truly want to do something. And, and the story around the awareness versus the skills gap is really fascinating to me because my, my oldest is 16, and okay. she's in that, in that area now saying, right. well, what do I want to do? I'm starting to look at colleges. I don't know what I want. I want to be, I want to be in, um, in uh, you know, criminal investigations, or I want to be a lawyer, I want to be right. this. And it's, she's picking those big titles. Right. Because that's what we know about. And she doesn't feel, I don't know, I shouldn't say that. I feel like she feels, or others feel, they don't have the skills to do all the other things, or they're not glamorous enough to do that. So curious yeah. to get your thoughts there. How do we, how, do, how does, uh, you're starting to explain how the Southwest covers right. that. How do, how do corporate organizations, how do they, what's the responsibility there to, to help with that? Well, it, it's funny you say that because, you know, I, twice this summer I, I talked to kind of a high school group organization with lots of teachers and people that help. And then I went to a, a little small conference um, that, that was um, a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, 50, 60 associate deans and kind of the business mm -hmm. schools of a lot of colleges. And, and I opened both of them up with the same thing of like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of philanthropic of what you're hearing from me in this and what we want to do, but don't mistake the selfishness of, <laughs> I got to staff yeah. 10,000 yeah. people a year and they got to come from someplace <laughs> and right, I'm a consumer. Right. So like, don't, yeah. don't, don't mistake that it's yeah. just that it's like, and, and, and at times I'm telling you, we need to do better. And, and so if I can help you, if I can help be a, a carrot for you for one, right? So that mm -hmm. whoever, at whatever age the kid begins to understand, oh, wait, wait a minute, you know, I can really be a pilot. Okay, great. Well, what do I, what do I need to be good at? Right. And then you, right. they begin to understand that. And so now there's a math becomes not just math, math becomes 
the the means to an end that they right. that With they intent. are very interested yeah. in. It's very intent. I uh, you know I remember the very first summer camp we did, and we one of the sessions we had was the scheduling group, and so this is really the folks <laughs> that. Mm -hmm know where all the planes are and have to move them around mm -hmm. and, and then as you can imagine okay there's yeah. weather or whatever and so you have to start thinking through all those things because the 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 you know there may be bad weather in philly right and so we avoid but but there were people in philly that were going to get on us and go one place and, and and so how do you work all that and we, they would do sessions and and they had they were given a plane, if you will, and said, okay, you got to get it from here to here, and, but here's your limitations. The plane can't fly this many hours. You've got a crew and all that. And I remember talking to the kids as they'd come out, and it's like, what was that like? And this one girl just looked at me, and she goes, that was math. And I was like, okay. And she goes, <laughs> she goes and then she goes, but it's the coolest math I've ever done. And I was like, okay, that's, that, that's, yeah. that's the that's the it's hook, right? Is, yeah. is is where that kind of comes from. So I think it's really, I do think it's really important, and I, uh, you know, I do think that there's a really mass opportunity for. Uh, we're all in this together, in, in my opinion, and so there's really mm -hmm. a huge opportunity for corporations to be working with schools and 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 then other agencies and 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 help with that, right? Help create that pathway. I think the other thing, Ryan, is in in, in the last decade if you will the one thing that i think that we've done we made a mistake and i think we're seeing it now is this sort of just college 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 for everyone there's no other way through life right. through college or whatever right. and so you have literally a generation of folks that of, of students that don't understand that um aren't meant or made or can't get through college don't like it right. and then they don't have anything else and sure. you know what I like to tell them: um, they get out with debt, which is even worse. They get out with so, debt and right. no direction. I was I was yeah. talking to this whole school or this conference, and it was um, teachers, high school teachers across the country. And I said, and a lot of them had you know um, uh, some lower income you know schools that they were representing. And I said, here's the deal: I can we can take ten of your students said, you give me one of them. And that one student has to come work for me at Southwest when they graduate high school, working on the ramp, which is below the wing. And I said, the minimum, the one minimum requirement is they have to stay with us for five years. I said, that person will out earn. And I said, your other nine get to go to college. I said, my person will out earn seven of those nine and it was just like that because i was like well here's the thing they're going to get raised here's the health care here's the 401k here's all these mm -hmm. things oh yeah i told you they had to stay with us for five years i didn't say they had to stay doing that job i have oh, no. seven or eight vps that started off throwing bags at the company right, right. And, and so to your point that debt and all those things are all talk to engineers and it's like we need engineers and that's great but we also need mechanics. And guess what? At 19, you can graduate with an A&P license and start doing that. And I go, I've got within five years, I think it's actually four, you're making six figures as an A&P mechanic for an airline. And then as it grows, they'll all, every mechanic for us will retire as a multimillionaire, right? Um, it, they just will. And so then you get into well, what kind of life do you want to live, right? Do you want right. to, because guess what? As they move along that pathway, not only are they making really, really good money and, and being well taken care of, but now they have a schedule that if coaching their kids soccer team or whatever it is, is really, really important to them. Mm -hmm. They've built it around that as well. And I think that's just one of the things that that we miss in that process is to go is to understand the kid or under in your case understand your daughter to go mm -hmm. okay how are how is she wired and what's important to her and and it yeah. and and think through all of those things in the choice of what it is that that she might want to be all right i gotta ask about the agency within the yeah. within southwest yeah. Yeah. because when you first i was gonna uh, I was going to just load up then, but I'm like, oh, I'll, yeah. let it, I'll let it breathe. We're getting towards the end of the show. I have to know how this works. 
Yeah. Because I think this is the first time I've heard someone say they run it like that. And first of all, I think it's the right way to do it. I think just, well, I could, we could stop there. But I think there's probably some change management that had to go along with that to get people to stop thinking about kind of the historical way of corporate recruiting. Right. And think of it, think of it as a full service agency. Uh, so tell us, just take us into that world. Yeah, no, well, it, it started out in, in one of my mid roles where I, um, we were actually running um, our, the contingent program within Southwest, right? So I had this little team and we created it internally and then, um, which in that, at that time when we did this, this was well over 10 years ago, that was rare, like that didn't happen. It was always being vendored out by somebody that would, you know, a, a managed service provider that would do it. And so when we started that, you know, I just kind of told the team at the time, I'm like, here's who we're competing against. And, and I go, so we have to act the same way. And part of that is we are blessed because we are internal, which means we have better information and we're getting this, but we can't act entitled that we're owed the wreck to work on or that we're owed this stuff. We've got to, we've got to earn this business. And so at that time I said, just like any other MSP that comes up for contract renewal, that's going to be our approach. But it was also, but it was also to the agencies. I was like, I want to be, cause I come from that background. I go, I want to be whoever the recruiter is for the, the agencies that we're choosing business. I want their best recruiter to want to be on the Southwest account because they get feedback in 24 hours. They get all these clear things and, and that we're actually in place of them. And, and where it kind of started William was, you know, those groups get paid, um, based on how much money's running through their program, right? And how much right. all the billing. And I, um, one of the times to, to a couple of the VPs are like, well, you know, Greg, why are you doing it? How is it different or whatever? And I go, hey, I get paid the same on the 5th and the 20th, whether there's $1 <laughs> or $100 million going through our program. For me, my best, it's what's in the best sister of Southwest. And that might actually be me telling you that we need to increase our bill rates because this is a really hard group and we want to make sure we're getting the best, but I'm not doing it because it's going to make my commissions go up. I, don't, I get nothing from that. Right. And so that's where it started. Um, and then I just, as I kept, you know, saying yes to opportunities and growing, I just kept doing it. And part of it is, um, you know, just even in talking to peers, I do think corporate recruiting at times can get very um there's just there can become an entitlement right because i don't have to go work for the wreck and so right. and i just said man when you have to place people in order to like eat pay your rent <clears throat> those things you have you have a different hustle factor and mm -hmm. so literally half of my team that i have now in the recruiter space spent a little bit of time in agency. Now my perfect is an agency corporate blend, but if I had to choose one or the other, I would choose agency because there's just this inherent hustle, this inherent, um, well, guess what? You lulled the customer to sleep because we took so long, you know, versus, hey, you've got this, how fast are we presenting candidates, right? How are we doing that? How are we creating that sense of urgency? But what's cool then too is as a full service, I could sit down if you're the hiring leader and go, William, I hear you, you need to get work done. We can go, here's the different ways that we can go, right? Here's, here's data that I have on the market. So let's talk about if it's gonna be full-time the level, but I could also put a contingent person there either for this or maybe attempt to hire, or you've got a longer play. What if we started getting you interns that we could ultimately convert? And, and so just being able to do all of those things, but also know, oh, wow, uh, right now we've got a really hard, we've got a really hard to fill role um, that's normally done as an individual basis, but the group is growing so much that I said, we're going to take a volume hiring approach to it because we will never get you staffed if we keep trying to do it one at a time. And like, everybody's like, well, you can't do that with a, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you can. It's just how you do it. It's just, it, it's just, there's more at the top of the funnel and you just have a different approach and everyone's got to be in. Well, you know, 
in a three week span, we staffed more for them than what we did in the previous seven months type of deal. And, and everyone's excited, everyone's working hard and we're tweaking it, but it's that kind of thing, right? And, and, and it, the biggest play for me, William, was just on my own team's mentality that it's just like, it's not about just filling a wreck, right? I, I tell any new hire that comes on my team, you know, here's what success will look like in the recruiter space is I'm like, I'm not interested and how many wrecks you filled or, or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm going to want to know how many relationships you built because that's what will be the key to your success on our team, on your peers, in your customer group or whatever. If you do that, um, not only the grace that you'll get, because we will make mistakes and stuff will happen, but the, but the insight that you'll get because they'll, they'll want you to be successful, right? And to begin thinking that way. And so I really love it. And so then what it's allowed us to do is like, oh, well now I, I need career mobility because how do we help our internals? And I have this right. recruitment marketing candidate experience because yeah, well, everybody can lose candidates through the process or how do you attract? And so, oh, oh yeah, well, you know, uh, I can, you know, back to the, going to an elementary school, I can go to an elementary school in the metroplex area and if and they say i'm you know hey greg muccio from southwest airlines is going to be here i promise you every single kid will think i'm either a pilot or a flight attendant they will not think that there's all these other roles and then to be really honest with you if um if it's if it is a economically disadvantaged they may not even because they've never flown before they may not even understand who we are and I mean, I've done this. There's a the closest elementary school to Love Field Airport, which is where our headquarters is in our Dallas airport. And the pines fly over them all day. I've been to a third grade class in there and they literally did not know who we were. And it's like, you know, that really loud sound when you're outside at recess and that thing, that's, that's you know, what we do. Oh, wow, that's cool. And so just all of those things um, are so important. So that's what I say, like we're really a full service and and what we say is it's, we know that, um, or our vision, if you will, is that it, it's, it is a business imperative that Southwest Airlines is staffed both now and in the future. And so that's what my team, that's what our job is to do is to be making sure that happens. Ah, drop so did I score Ryan? Did I oh punch my it in? God. Did I punch I'm, it in? Um, I'm a believer, Greg. I'm a believer. Nice. nice. Just nice. I'm a believer in Southwest and you. I'm not going to go oh as far God. as saying Dak is great. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Fair. I can, yeah, I'll take fair. it. I'll take it. We small, got, small we got, victories. Yeah. 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 We, got, we got two times to prove that to you this year. So we'll yeah. see. And we, we, could, we, we could have a second episode oh my on God. everything you just spoke about. And maybe sure. we'll, that was, yeah, there's a ton to talk oh. about there. Greg, you're doing, yeah. I mean, just you're doing great, great work. And, Thank you for coming on the show, educating our audience, because I, I love the approach. Yeah. I just think it's a great way to keep the, the hustle yeah. in there, because it's uh, it's natural to get stale. And, yeah. and uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's got luxury vehicles, mortgages, and all this yeah. other stuff. Yeah. And so you can kind of just kind of yeah. become impacted get, by that. Well, and I, I tell my team, I'm, you know, uh, I believe this for myself personally, but for the team and, you know, you, you, always try and get better and, and you know and I'm, I'm a big believer I always kind of you know I try to use sports analogies when I can you know um, I'm not saying that I hire based on that on my own team but it does help a little bit that I don't have to think of something different to give them or whatever but I always talk about in baseball it's like you know what you can score a run by hitting a home run you can also do it by hitting four singles in a row and I think sometimes we really lose sight Oh uh, yeah. Everyone's just trying to make a big move and, and would love to come back and talk to you because we are under that vein. We are sort of reinventing ourselves a little bit with what the market is and we're mm. we're we're doing a big thing what I call is we're moving really heavy left of the wreck and, and we're also um, approaching we really kind of flip the script on the approach of our work. So it, today it's it's really recruiter centric, if you will. Right. And and, and, and they're still really important, but it's like, wow, I've got all these really great tools now. We need to think about, well, when the work comes, how can I absorb it? And I want to be able to make sure that we can scale up to the work without, without just constantly adding headcount or putting us in that jeopardy. And I always tell people, I'm like, you know, 
most companies, including ourselves, that for the most part, um, you start your work when you get your wreck. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to get to the point where the wreck is the beginning of the end. The wreck is the is the activity that has to happen to get the person on board that we've right. been talking to for for however right. long. Right. That gets you to speed. Right. Uh, speed and, and quality. quality. It's, it's like those. Yeah, you know, so the, right. There's no. You, you know. Y'all know this from the space. I, I'll joke. I'm like. I, I'm. You know. Been doing this between the agency and Southwest. You know. Almost 27 years. I'm like. Still waiting for a hiring leader to either tell me to slow down. <laughs> right. That I'm moving too fast. Uh, or, too, or, 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 too many hey, candidates. Yeah, you're sending us too many good people. Could you lower yeah. the bar on what you're sending? Like, <laughs> when that happens, that may be my time to say it's over. Mm, it's, I'm it's, retiring. Yeah, yeah, Armageddon is on its way and I'm yeah, out of yeah. here. But until then, how do we keep trying to make that better? I love it. Thank you so much for coming on okay. the show, spending time with us, and spending time with our audience, Greg. We really it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me.